I have some fantastic beasts. This is my room tour. Some of these animals you may not see in your lifetime. So stay tuned. Three, two, one. Oh Max, I have some fantastic beasts. I live in New Zealand, and our exotic pet list is really, really small. But we also have incredible animals here in New Zealand that you need a permit to keep, but I also have them, and I'm very fortunate to do so. I'm going to take you through my room tour, my pet room tour, my exotic room tour, whatever you want to call it. But it all started from this. It all started from Timu. I'm not gonna lie to you, Timu is absolutely dope. It's like the new AliExpress, it's the new Alibaba, it's on steroids, it's awesome. I bought this awesome LED light, frog smoking a dart. Obviously it was perfect for the reptile room. But keeping these fantastic beasts ain't always easy. It's a lot of time, it's effort, it's a lot of being creative, being innovative, and obviously making new enclosures, new environments, places to keep their live food, cleaning, exploring, like I said, being creative, and just enjoying it. And I love it because you're always learning. You're learning new skill sets, you're learning new husbandry strategies. You're just constantly playing with and experimenting with different aquarium setups, different terrarium setups, different paludarium setups, wherever it may be, using live, bioactive, or it's just static. This is a little baby leopard gecko enclosure that I was kind of playing with, exploring, using super glue, using different substrate terrains. But anyway, I love the process and that's why I do what I do. And I also, like I said, keep some fantastic beasts. And I hope you enjoyed this video because I'm gonna walk through every single animal I have. Plus, in the future, there'll be more to come. So stay tuned. Alright, I want to start with my aquarium. Now I know this is all about fantastic beasts, but I think fish are pretty fantastic. And I've enjoyed fish my whole life. I used to have tropical fish, freshwater fish, and I'll get marine in the future. Now what I mean by these guys are pretty fantastic, I like to keep odd fish, not your popular guppies or community fish. I've got bumblebee gobies, I've got a pea puffer, I've got two coolie loach, and I've got some snails. Now this is a little aquascape experiment that I've had for the last six months, and it has been an amazing journey. So first things first, coolie loach, absolutely underrated. If you don't have coolie loaches in your tropical fish tank, you need to get them. They're super awesome, they're super active, and they're super inquisitive. Now these guys live in harmony together, They're pretty small, I think it's like a 7 gallon if I was to convert it. Lots and lots of plants, that's all I believe in. When it comes to fish tanks, lots and lots and lots of plants, right? I do one water change a week, and I just clean out the filters, that's it. Obviously scrub the algae, but you gotta do what you gotta do. This has some indirect sunlight, so it's gonna get algae, but it's not the end of the world. Small fish tanks are actually really easy to maintain. So if you are interested in getting a fish tank, but you're worried about all the maintenance, or you're scared because you know there's a lot of things that go into it when you get much bigger setups, but five to seven gallon is perfect. I literally, like I said, I do one water change, 10 to 20% a week. I change out the filters if I need to about every two to three weeks with the cartridges. Otherwise, lots of plants. I've got my cleanup crew and it flourishes pretty well. The fish have been going strong for six months and I soon will upgrade to a much larger aquarium because I want more. As always, the addiction with having interesting pets, but these guys love it and they're super interesting to watch. So start small if you're a beginner. So what do I feed these guys? Well, interestingly enough, puffers, uh, pea puffers, and bumblebee goby love live food. Now my coolie loach, they'll eat bloodworms, they'll eat fish flakes, they'll eat everything static because they basically are a form of cleanup crew. But the bumblebee gobies and the pea puffers, they, these guys only eat live food. I've tried everything else, they're just not interested. So you might need to think about that if you do get fish. Obviously things like guppies and community fish like tetras, they'll eat anything and everything. But some fish prefer live food and it's also good to feed them live food if you're planning on breeding them. Thank you. 
Alright, let's talk about something super special, the Ruakawa Gecko of New Zealand. These guys are endemic to New Zealand, they're terrestrial, and they exist only in this part of the world. Their other name is ironically Common Gecko, but I've never seen one in the wild in my whole life here in New Zealand. They're terrestrial, but they do climb, so they can be arboreal. I've got four of them, I've got two boys and two girls, and you need a permit to keep these guys in New Zealand because they are protected, they're under conservation, and I think that's awesome because I want my daughter to grow up and see these animals still exist myself having the opportunity to hopefully breed these guys and assist with the conservation program in the future. But anyway, look at these little guys. The other cool thing about them is that they're fairly communal in nature. So a lot of geckos are solitary, meaning that they live on their own and they come together for breeding in the right season. But these guys like to huddle up in the cold weather all together or they like to sleep in the same area. Now what I'm giving them here is nectar. They love nectar, so they are insectivores so their main diet consists of insects but they also like honey and fruit prairie because that's what they also eat in the wild whether it's native flowerings or any fruit that they find so i give them both <laughs> They are also heavily nocturnal, meaning that at night they're mostly active. But I'm quite lucky because one or two of them will come out during the day, they'll say hi, they'll hang out, they might bask under the UV and then they'll go and hide. Of course I have leopard geckos, of course I do. There's a reason why they're one of the most popular lizards to keep in captivity in the world. Just look at them, absolutely stunning. They look like leopards, you get more versions. This is in Ike and Ike, but I have three. I've got a little bonus one to show you. Essentially, I keep leopard geckos in two different environments. One is that I like to call the North American environment, which is just simple in plastic tubs, heat pads on paper towels, super easy to clean, super easy to feed, and also in a much more, I guess, natural environment or bioactive style. Now, they eat mealworms, they eat crickets, locusts, black soldier fly larvae, waxworms. This is Sprinkles. Now, Sprinkles was given to me just for short term while her owner goes on a holiday overseas. In here, I've got the heat emitter, I've got the UVB, I've got the LED lighting. Now, leopard geckos, by nature, are nocturnal but they do venture out during the day and especially in captivity they become more active during the day because they're not so much in their natural environment like they're in the wild they don't have any predators but this is sprinkles sprinkles is big man sprinkles is a big leopard gecko she's bigger than Ike and ike but an amazing animal now look at those spots and those features they come from pakistan afghanistan those regions but remember as always do your research now leopard geckos are one of the more easier reptiles to keep as pets so hence a very popular choice I'm also low-key a mad amphibian fan, so I have Japanese fire-bellied newts. Now in New Zealand you can get two species, the Chinese and the Japanese. This is Kelvin. Kelvin is a baby Japanese fire-bellied newt. I raised him from an egg and that video is linked below if you want to watch the full journey. A six month journey from egg to Kelvin. Now they live in this creek that I built for them. Nelly is also in here, who is about a year and a half, so a little bit older, but if it, essentially I have two EFTs. EFT is the phase before they go fully aquatic. Now you see what I mean by that. The adults are absolute magnificent underwater beasts. This is a stream terrarium I created for Calvin and Nelly for them to dip their toes in the water and once they get older and much more used to the aquatic environment, then one day they'll move from this awesome crib that I built them to an amazing underwater paludarium with fish, with snails, and that upgrade is coming soon because my adult Japanese fire-billed newts are currently in what I like to call a flatting situation. But these guys eat white worms, they eat blood worms, when they're underwater or fully aquatic, they can just eat frozen bloodworms. They don't need things to move around, but mosquito larvae are also a, a really good choice. But when they're EFTs, although I feed Nelly bloodworms, Calvin definitely needs live foods, so whether it's white worms or whether it's fruit flies or live blackworms, anything he can fit in his little gob. Now Calvin is still so small, look at him, cute little fella, but soon he'll grow up to be an absolutely four to six inch huge, magnificent underwater creature. Oh, they grow up so fast, honestly. He grows up too fast, breaks my heart. But anyway, let's check out the underwater beasts. Like I said, they live in this temporary flatting situation, but it's all they need in the short term. They've got 10% land, they've got a lot of vegetation, a lot of plantation, they've got substrate, and they get fed every two to three days. It's getting colder, so that's less. 
they'll come out from time to time. They kind of bask, but not really. I'm assuming that they just get some fresh air or dry off a little bit. But this is them. I've got two boys, I think. And Japanese fire-bellied newts get super warty. The males get a sheen of purple, so they're really, really colorful. But look at them. They just disappear into the darkness. <laughs> Like I said, I've got a soft spot for amphibians also. This is my whistling tree frog terrarium or paludarium. Now, whistling tree frogs, ironically, live in New Zealand in the wild, but they were introduced and they're now being naturalized in New Zealand. They flourish in cold weather. They do really well on the South Island. I'm based in Canterbury and I keep them in cold, fairly cold conditions throughout winter and they do just fine. They're still active, they still eat. They're a small tree frog. We've got three species that live here. They're green golden bell the southern golden bell and the whistling tree frog or the brown tree frog all three from australia all introduced we do have native frogs but they are very very protected now these guys get a spotlight they get a uvb and they also get an led light and this enclosure is flourishing there's three adults in here i've also got some juveniles inside if you've seen some of my earlier videos i do experiment with jars and other smaller terrariums and environments and they do just fine i love raising frogs from tadpoles watching the journey end to end but these guys are an absolute treat now what do they get? I give them isopods, I give them flies, house flies, blow flies, they get small crickets, they get millipedes, any, any bugs I can catch around the garden. They try, I like to keep it free range as possible, but otherwise these guys are hungus. <laughs> So I've saved the best for last, almost, almost. We're almost at the end. Now these are Northland green geckos and I've got my forest geckos as well. Once again, both these species endemic to New Zealand. They only exist in this part of the world. I give them fruit paste, I give them honey, they're insectivores, but there's a reason why these guys are amazing. You need a permit to keep them in New Zealand. They're not located anywhere else in the world. And visually, I think New Zealand geckos are the most stunning, not just these, but all of our species. And there's more to come on this channel down the track, I hope, because I hope I get to keep more incredible species species and show them to the world to how beautiful and incredible these animals really are. Now the forest gecko is nocturnal in nature but he'll be out from day to time to time. I have a nursery but I also keep them outside. I've brought everyone inside for winter so I can work on this one, overhaul it, do some repairs and also build two additional outdoor enclosures but keeping them inside also allows me to keep a close eye on them during winter period. They get UVB, they get LED, they get browse, they get bioactive environments. Keeping New Zealand geckos is actually really, really simple because they already live in our environment, so you can keep them outdoors. So that's definitely a bonus. There's less heating and temperature requirements. Now, this is Godzilla. He's one of my first, well, he is my first OG. He's the OG. He's my first Northland gecko. He's my first native gecko I've ever gotten. I have a super, super soft spot for him. But otherwise, guys, super privileged to keep these in captivity. Now, I don't know how you feel about bugs, but I have cave wetter. Cave wetter are endemic to New Zealand, which makes them super incredible. We have a lot of wetter species here. This is one of the few that don't bite. They have super long antenna, and I think they're epic. They can jump like three meters. They're super nocturnal. And I built them this awesome, I call it the inside of a tree trunk, essentially. I tried to replicate their natural environment as much as I can. That video is also linked to this. They're super carnivorous. They tear apart mealworms overnight, but they're super cool. I've got five of them in here, and I'm hoping to breed them. Once again, I'm hoping to breed them, and I'm hoping to learn how to raise them in captivity so like I said they are native to New Zealand and that makes them pretty special All right, so look at these colorations. Like I said, I'm not done with the native geckos. This is a New Zealand forest gecko, just a slightly different color variation. Look at that, like it, it should be in the military, that camouflage, you can't even explain it. Now these guys, these are three adults, and I keep these guys inside for now as I'm building their future home outside, which is gonna be this massive outdoor enclosure. It's gonna be epic. Now they've got some fruit pre, they've got some water, it's fully bioactive. Now these guys are arboreal in nature, but they'll be okay just for a couple weeks more. But anyway, they've got the LED, they've got the UVB, they've got plenty of brows. Now I'm using native brows, and brows, what I mean by that is off cuts of trimmings, essentially. Now these are native trimmings that live in my garden. They've got flowerings, which means that provides some honey for them. Now this is two hiding in this bamboo hide. When it gets super cold, they do like a tuck up. I don't want to disturb them too much. 
but this is them this is their environment i'm super happy with it and it'll do just fine for a short term So these are Cunningham skinks. Now these guys are originally from Southeast Australia. They are sleeping right now, it's super cold, so technically they're hibernating, so they'll sleep for a couple of months, but this is their enclosure. It's pretty big, it's 1.5 by 1.5 by 600. It's a temporary home, but it's pretty good. It's open top, and I've got some ridges, so they can't escape, but they get a lot of fresh airflow ventilation. I do put them outside, and I've got a lid for that. But here are some shots of when they're outside in a nylon enclosure, getting fresh sunlight, getting some warmth and some fresh air. Now these guys are epic, they're super skittish, so they're not overly pet friendly, you can't really hold them, they can bite, they've bitten me a few times, but they're amazing animals. They've got these dragon-like tails, they are omnivores, meaning that they eat insects, they eat fruit, they eat egg, they eat a bit of everything, but otherwise, these guys are epic, and I'm super stoked to have them. So that's it, that's my room tour. Now there's gonna be more to come and I'm super excited. I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope you saw some fantastic beasts. I hope you saw some animals that you have never seen before. But otherwise, over and out.